Hello everybody, it is me, Postmodern Cowboy, and today I'm here with Going Medieval. We're going medieval today. Actually, I'm going to do two videos today. Uh, it's been a while since I've done any videos, but I'm feeling a little bit inspired. Also, I've got some content to cover. Uh, I want to do Going Medieval as a warm-up. This is a really fun game. Uh, I've, I've enjoyed it thoroughly. I've logged more hours than I'd care to admit in the last few weeks. <laughs> and uh, I also want to do Nebulous Fleet Command because there's been an update, and uh, maybe I'll talk a little bit about that. But this, this, is, uh, this is about castles. Right now we're talking about castles. I, I haven't done... Um, I don't think like a mountain blade stream or, or any kind of like my, my medievalist videos, but I, uh, boy, um, am I, am I into the, the, the middle ages? I'm, I'm in my middle ages, but I'm into the middle ages. Okay. So without further ado, going medieval, what is going medieval? Going medieval is a community management, uh, a community management sim. Um, by the way, just for. Uh, your awareness, uh, we are playing uh, Ravensworth Castle, and Ravensworth Castle is a ruined castle in England um, in a place called Richmond. So this map seed is actually Richmond, with a lowercase r. I'll put that down in the, in the description. Um, but what's interesting is that this map seed, uh, it's Hillside. If you've played Going Medieval, you know that Hillside is uh, one of the more varied terrains, you know, a mountain uh, has much, much larger hills, but hillside has some hills. Uh, and it's got this, it's got this wonderful terrain feature here. Look at this. Look at this. When you, I'm going to pause this. When, when you look at this, doesn't it just make your, doesn't it just make your heart sing? Don't you just see the castle rising out of the dirt? So Richmond, as it turns out, as a seed, has one of the best terrain layouts that I've seen for a uh, medium size, fully functional castle. Um, so, you know, you got uh, nodules coming off this little rise here, uh, which are perfect for gatehouse towers. You can put your gate here. I'm gonna put a double wide gate there and I'm, I'm gonna block all this out in a second. Obviously the main keep is gonna go back here in this depression. Um, it's shielded on three sides by terrain. so. Trebuchets are going to have a hard time penetrating into, like, you know, the sensitive inner parts of the castle. I'll probably put the beds and stuff in here, the, the chambers, um, and then some storage down below. Cold storage down below. We'll put a kitchen in the uh, upper ward here. And then the lower ward here is built over this, this pit. And this pit, um, not only does it have some salt and stone in it, uh, and there is, of course, there's, there's stone and iron all throughout this this area um, and some coal over here and some clay, um, hay, and I think I think there's barley somewhere around. That might be random. Um, this this depression being divided into three, you can build a central building here like a like a church, and then you can put a floor over the top of this, and the church has an automatic undercroft. Um, and it's just it's just so cool. This this really uh, got me excited when I saw it. I was like, oh, I found the perfect seat. Uh, from now on, um, we play on Richmond. So we play on Richmond. Okay, uh, so what do I do? What do I do to start? Um, going medieval, I've got three settlers. Uh, we've got Anais, uh, Francis, and Seward. Um, these are uh, custom-made characters. I used the, uh, the, the character builder to really min-max their points. And we're playing on a fairly hard difficulty here. I think we're playing on difficult. I don't think we're playing on the hardest difficulty, because the hardest difficulty is really hard, um, at least in terms of the size of enemy raids, you know, like groups of 30 master archers. like. You, you can't fight that. You just have to, like, block off your entrance and, and hope they don't trebuchet down some critical wall section. Uh, okay. So Frankie here is going to take... Uh, what's he going to take? He's going to take the buckler. And he's going to take the sword. And Seward is going to take the longbow. She's got a high enough archery skill to use. And Anais is going to take the short bow. And Seward, being our hunter, is also going to take that. So my priorities right now are to make this unassailable. Um, I want to make it so that the first enemy raid just, just bounces. Oh, there's a couple dead deer here, too. Look at that. Look at that. I didn't even... That's random. That's random. Those weren't there before. Cool. Okay, so we got some meat uh, right off the bat. And there's some mushrooms here. Yeah, we're, we're going to do fine. Now... The most important building when you're siding a castle, what is it? Is it the blacksmith? Is it the keep? 
Is it the gate? Gate's pretty important. I'd say gate's number two um, for my builds. But the most important building when you're building a castle, weirdly enough, is your kitchen. Um, now, they don't have fire mechanics currently in this game. Um, we don't have, um, like, spreading or propagating fire. But in reality, if you build a kitchen in your keep, you get a good chance of accidentally setting the whole building on fire um, and having nowhere to live. So kitchens are often outbuildings, um, they're, but they're substantial outbuildings because they need to be big to accommodate enough uh, laborers to produce enough food to feed all the people who live in the castle. Um, in this case, we've got three people living in our castle right now, our non-existent castle that we're going to build. But let's see. Let me see. I think I'm going to put my kitchen in the upper ward on the rise. And let me count. So we'll count that as two. So kitchen can start there and can continue over one, two, three, four, five, six. So give it a width of five. Yes, that makes sense. Um, some, some buildings you want them to be uh, even numbers uh, width. Some buildings you want them to be uh, odd numbers width and the same goes for length. And there's reasons for that based on the size of the... Uh, and we're just going to make it a generic seven units long. So we got a little five by seven. Uh, yeah, that looks about right for a kitchen. And there's not much else, not much else you can do. Um, I'm going to fill the wall segments with clay. This is something else I've started doing. Uh, you know, buildings in this time period were built of wattle and daub, uh, which is a mixture of straw and cow dung and, and clay or mud. Um, and, oops, so those are going to form the door jam. And this is just aesthetic. This is just me um, showing some of my, my early building style. And so we don't need stairs right away, but we will pretty quick. I'm actually going to cite the stairs, and there's going to be stairs down. There's going to be stairs down on this corner. One, two, three stairs. Okay. So now the, the most important thing to start, you need to cite a stockpile, and then you want to cover a stockpile. So we've got a kitchen building. Um, I'm going to just put a stockpile... I'm going to actually fill this whole area with stockpile. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Um, you know what? I shouldn't do that, should I? Because it's got to be covered so I don't lose items. Uh, why will you not? Oh, I'm just not on the right. So I'm still not great at this game, but I have so many, so many damn hours in it. Um, all right. Yeah, see, I can't delete these things. There we go. Put that in there. And I'm just going to put a wooden wall at the corners of the stockpile. And then critical buildings, absolutely critical buildings to build early. I'm actually going to build the butcher's table outside of the kitchen to start. The kitchen, I think, is going to have to enlarge um, based on what I'm seeing there. But that that's fine. Everything, everything changes. If it's a uh, it doesn't really matter where this goes, I guess. Just stick it in that corner there. And then a campfire can go in the kitchen proper. And then we need uh, beds. And because the kitchen's going to be the first building with a roof, I guess this is going to be the first building with a roof, isn't it? So I'm going to put one, two, three sleeping spots. And that's it. So what what do we do then um before we even unpause the game we're going to set up our our uh, work schedule for our uh, castle residents um, right now everybody's getting the same schedule to keep things easy i'm going to give them uh, an hour in the morning i'm going to give them two hours in the evening three hours of leisure a day uh, mostly it's just work though mostly it's just work and as far as management goes i want them dressed for summer And they are to wear all available armor. They won't use any shields. Frankie here is going to use shields, and he's going to use melee one-handed weapons. 
And so this, this uh, prioritizes what they'll grab off the ground. If there's an available weapon and they're not holding a weapon, um, they'll pick them up and make sure that they're, they're generally always, uh, and I'll make sure they can pick up any and all headgear. And uh, critically, critically, you gotta make sure that they only eat meals. Otherwise they'll go and they'll eat your raw food, which sometimes means depleting your seeds, right? They're just standing there shoveling barley into their mouths. Like, what are you doing? That's like, <laughs> that's like next year's crops. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, okay. So with that out of the way, uh, I'm just gonna set them up to haul and uh, oh, I need to give them something to haul. So all of the items that start on the ground uh, start with the hand. Oh, I get it. They dropped their winter clothes. That makes sense. All the items on the ground start with the hand uh, preventing them from being picked up. And in the upper ward here, we're also going to start to build a pen because... Before we can even do agriculture, we gotta pen the animals. Otherwise, in fact, I'm just gonna pen the animals with the butcher. It's not grim or anything. Um, if you don't pen your animals, the animals will wander around and eat your crops once you plant them. Um, so a lot of the or like early game is managing not workflows, but but like consumption logic. Um, who shouldn't be left unattended? Uh, okay, we'll put a pen marker in here. To note that it's a pen and a drop. Hey, <laughs> bless me, bless me. Okay, so what are they doing now? I'll just speed time up and let them run. Yeah, they're just they're just gonna truck back and forth here for more than a bit, probably the full day. I would imagine they might they might not get their beds built. That's fine. Nobody's gonna die because they slept in the ground for one night and say they got the deer right away. That's that's wonderful. And my, my priority is really uh, to get um, a roof on this ASAP so these things don't decay because things decay, so you can see here, decomposes in 33 days, the deer carcass. It'll decay faster, I guess. I feel like the deer carcass shouldn't last 33 days. Oh, but it, it's gonna rot in 12 days. Um, yeah, so there's, that makes sense, more sense, I think it, I think, I think a deer carcass will keep for a couple days in open air, um, I mean, I, it's, most of the meat's not gonna be very good, um, I had some bad pork yesterday, actually, as a, as an aside, I had a pork roast, I was, like, not dry aging, um, in the, in the fridge, I think it was supposed to turn into chops, but I didn't, and, and I cooked it, I, I herbed it up, um, and I left it in the fridge for four days, four days after thawing. And um, when I when I took it out, it didn't smell bad. Um, one part of it was a little slimy, but it was fine. But then I put it in the, the pressure cooker and I cooked it up and God, did it stink. God, did it stink. And I could taste, I could taste the, the taint. I could taste the taint in the meat. Uh, so a little bit on the nose here. My meat spoiling. I gotta get. I gotta get. A, I gotta get a smoker and smoke my meats, as uh, Mark Zuckerberg would say. Okay. What's it mean? Good. Good. So Anise is building the research table. And as soon as you build a research table, you can unlock the first two tiers of architecture and agriculture, provided your books to do so are on your stockpile. Um, and architecture gives you the. Uh, crucial beam so that allows you to square off your stockpile cover oops and uh, for some reason I fucked up for some reason I fucked up and I built that's hilarious I built look at me look at me go okay so we're just gonna whatever Okay, that's better. And then as soon as that's up, we can build a wicker roof. Now I just build a wicker roof because it's cheap. Uh, wicker just takes sticks and we're gonna put a wicker roof on the kitchen as well. The kitchen's gonna need some clay. Uh, oh, it's gonna need a door too. That's important to support the when they're digging out there. 
Okay, so we've got, this is enough. Um, I need to cut some trees now. Cut those trees there, it's like all five. Don't cut too many trees at once or else you never wind up being able to haul properly because your, your peasants are always like they've got like six days of wood hauling before the haul in the crops and the crops have gone bad before this. So just cut wood when you need it. Also, you don't deforest this much um, because trees spread from trees. So leaving trees to repopulate trees over time is a really important uh, kind of uh, environmental management procedure. Here I'm going to wind up using... I don't know, maybe I'll use stone. Maybe I'll use stone like as out of the gate as I can. Like if you if you rush um limestone block, limestone block being the like the like ashlar type, um the hardest construction material, best against raids and trebuchets and stuff. Oh, they, really? She failed to build a door. Um, but if you rush limestone block, you can build your entire castle from the ground up in limestone block and you never have to go through like your mountain daily phase um, Wasting all the wood, but I don't know if I'm gonna do that here I don't really quite have enough stone on hand. There's a lot of stone over here But that's gonna take some time for me to get unless I build a quarry and that's that's pretty much just a little stone there Some stone there and then a huge patch of iron, but not much stone so that 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 patch there is like the biggest amount of stone we've got in the map and resources do deplete like you can take down several layers um there's more certainly underneath that but eventually eventually you can run out you can have um and i, I did that actually playing on a meadows uh or valley playing in a valley uh map layer which is like this but flat um <laughs> i ran out of resources uh totally out of stone very early on i was buying like 40 bricks at a time from a trader so i was like nope this castle's doomed it keeps halfway done in stone and the rest has to be done in like clay brick which is also hard it's as hard as the stone it just it's red it looks very different um and i didn't really plan to build a red brick keep like a teutonic fortress okay so we've got now a roof above our stockpile which means things are while well, they're outside they're not decaying as quickly um food reserves and stockpile are low that's no good has she built the fire yet? Yeah. Okay, so they've built the fire. And make sure when you do this, when you when you set them to cook meals, you untick barley. Otherwise, the second you get barley, they're gonna prioritize, they're gonna make a bunch of bread and be like, look at all the bread I made. And you're like, but but we need barley. Like we need to grow more barley. Barley begets barley. Okay. Um Frank's cooking. I need some clay. I really need some clay. I have the yeah, other's clay right there. Oh, you know what? There's probably loose clay on the surface around here somewhere. If I just pause for a second and I look, I look at all this loose clay. Okay, let's send them to collect that stuff. I need to cut another couple trees so that we finish the woodwork there. And I might as well cut these trees here too off the rise. Um, now you'll notice the rise has a bunch of ramps up to it. There's one, two, three, four, five ramps. So we're gonna reduce that to one ramp. That's gonna be that one. So I'm going to assign uh, digging orders. Three, four, five. There might actually be six, there's six. Oh, that one doesn't really go up. So there's five. There's five ramps up the the rise here. This is actually this is like a, a fairly uh, fairly real layout. Like if you compare this to the Ravensworth Castle uh, layout in in uh, in reality, it's not too different. So it's just built on a little mound over a marshy area, not a like sunken pit. But um, it was the the Fitzhugh Castle. Um, it's the a family that fought on multiple sides of many English conflicts, including the Wars of the Roses. Um, this game is set in the 1350s, which would, would put it um, in or around the time of the Black Plague and the, the Scottish Wars. 
um, like William Wallace is contemporaneous, I think this this game is a setting, and it is set in England. Um, and if I pull up the region, you'll notice that like um, did, like uh, Heresy of the Rose and the Kingdom of York and the Faithful Sons of England are all like that. You know, the factions are modeled on like monarchist or anarchist factions um, or bandit factions in the uh, the the thirteen fifties. Yeah, thirteen fifty three. There's the date right there. Uh, okay. I think my characters are naked right now because I took their clothes out. They are naked. Seward's got some armor on. Uh, and uh, getting getting armor and, and equipment is going to take some effort, but that's super important to do. Okay. How's the hauling going? Have they cleared this pad? Pretty much. We'll give them one more run to grab the last clay. And then they'll start digging. Notice I haven't changed their, their job task yet from Hall. They're still just in bring stuff where it needs to be mode, and the, but they'll dig and they'll cut the trees independently. And uh, as soon as this pen is built, um, I'm going to get sewered on animal husbandry. <sighs> and then we'll talk about defenses, and we'll talk about defending against the first raid, because we got, we got about four and a half days. Uh, it happens toward the end of the seventh day. Um, fairly standard video game trope there. Um, it may not happen. It may not happen in this difficulty mode. Sometimes you, you your your raids it turns into just a standing loss on the harder difficulties. Um, because raids are good. Raids are how you get your equipment. Uh, bad guys bring them to your walls, and you shoot them from the walls, and you go out and you loot their bodies. All right, we're getting the clay walls up now. That's good. I need to put a floor in this kitchen. Um, I think we'll put a wood floor in the kitchen. Sometimes I use wicker, but you wind up cutting more trees. And we're going to just leave that open. And we'll put a stair down. Yeah, right now they're all pulling together, and that's good. You get a lot, you get a, a lot of stuff done. See, it's only 10 in the morning when the kitchen's already floored. <laughs> And now they're digging. Yeah, so they're... Maybe I should have left that one ramp there. I can build stairs back up, I guess, when I when I fortify it. But right now they're going to have to truck all the way around every time. That's fine, I guess. I do need to figure out my, my width here, because I want to double wide. Uh, so... Hang on, let me pause and just put some marker blocks down. Two, three. One, two, three. So, if I want a double wide gate, my gate posts are going to be there and there. In fact, I'm going to put them further back on this one. And uh, I'm just going to clear these. Which means I can build a couple of stairs as a uh, start, and I can take that last ramp as well. I'm just going to cut off the kitchen temporarily, and I, you know what, I am going to build a set of stairs up here, and then we're going to need to block this entrance here um, in the back so that the stockpile is inaccessible. And I don't wanna I don't wanna leave a door right now. I might I might open it up or find some way to to build a, a sally port in the back. A sally port is like a smaller uh, my more minor entrance to a fortification. But right now I want there to be a single entrance and I want it to be far from my stockpile um, at a point where I can control it. And we're gonna start to start chopping trees, so we wanna chop some more trees. I need to get some research done too. Um, what's the most crucial thing I need to research? Probably food storage. So we're actually going to assign uh, Anais now to research. And make sure that you set your uh, production to actually run. 
and I also need to set my, you know what, I'm actually going to set NAs to cook first, and then I'm going to set it to research, if that makes sense. Okay. Double door. Ventilate that bitch. And put a wooden set of stairs up there. So that's it. That that's a that's a rudimentary gate. This is a you know access control. Uh, is your uh, biggest concern when you're building a defensive structure, access control, or a structure you intend to defend, um, access control determines how many people can enter at one time, where they can enter. Um, so you'll notice now that there are no points of entry at all, except for this. And that could be a problem because I don't have a sally port and I took the stairs and ramped down, which was silly. So they, they didn't leave the castle today. <laughs> I, just, I just wasted half a day. They walked around and used only what was on the stockpile. Um, kitchen roof is being built. From my roofs back on so I can see them. It's starting to take shape, right? Like you're seeing the, the outline of uh, fortification. Um, I'm going to I don't know. I'm, I'm probably going to get through to the wooden castle stage and then and then I'm going to call it uh, because like this, this game can eat time. Like you can just and because it runs in the background, so like you can uh, you can sort of like alt tab or, or go watch something while your peasants do what they're supposed to do for a little while. Um, it's it's like deceptively time consuming. So I've like I've said, I, I I've spent way more time than I intended to in the last week playing this. But <sighs> okay, what's up here? Maybe those goats in a pen, but. Meat goes to the stockpile, and I'm, I'm gonna have to re uh, reassign my stockpile locations in a second here. But I need them to get out there and get those trees. Come on, go cut plants and then haul them. There we go. How did he just? Oh, there's. So you gotta watch for things like that, or when the enemy attack comes, they'll just... Oops, they passed over a thing that you didn't even know was accessible. Because you weren't paying attention to where your peasants were walking. See, I've already... Look, I've already deforested an area. <laughs> like, like, trees go fast. The last time I played, I saved this and turned it into a mighty forest, but... Uh, I, I chopped over this way. I think I'm gonna actually leave the more trees for now. I'm gonna cut this grove next. Hmm. Okay, she's cooking. We've got stew in the works. Let's see, has any barley come up yet? Barley grows in the spring, in the mid-spring, and in the summer. Um, and so you'll see another herbs. Yeah, there's barley here. See, so this is these are barley plants. And one of your most crucial early game things you can do is assign uh, settler to harvest them. Some flax down here too, but it's not quite ready yet. I think that was all the barley. It's usually not, oh, there's another dead deer over here. That's fantastic. I think the wolves kill the deer and they just eat them over time. The wolves are no longer hostile, which is just nice. Uh, the wolves used to be like hostile if your villagers wandered into their area, which is a little hokey because wolves don't hunt people. Like, they're not the apex predator we are. I mean, it added like a level of difficulty, but also like good on the developers for moving away from the anti-wolf prejudice. Um, I I'm okay if they kill your livestock though. Like that's that makes that makes a lot of sense. Um, and having to fence things in to keep uh, both deer off your crops and wolves out of your your animal pen. Okay. 
I've got a lot of food now. Uh, and she's still cooking. I'll let her keep cooking, I guess. So we're just brought in some barley. Okay, so now we're gonna we're now we're gonna do our first planting. And because it's the first year, uh, how many cabbage seeds do we have? Like thirty-five. Yeah. So because it's the first year, we're gonna plant everything on this rise up here. Um, and I don't have to wall it because all the animals are theoretically gonna be contained. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eleven. So we build three rows of eleven. We've got thirty-three. Save a couple seeds and plant our six barley. Cabbages uh, turn over a lot faster than barley. Barley takes an entire season to grow. Um, plus two days, I think. Like all spring plus two or all summer plus two. <sighs> Which means you can technically, if you do it perfectly, get two barley crops in a year, but... How are we doing on not good, not good. Send him back to cut some more plants. Okay, so at the end of day four, things are going very well. I've, I've really got this down to a like a science at this point in time. I really wish this game had multiplayer. I, you know, it'd be so much fun to have to compete and build castles at the same time, and like, but also like you know the active pause and RimWorld has multiplayer. I'll say that there's there's multiplayer in RimWorld. There's a merchant. Doesn't matter what time of day it is. You get up. Oh, you go barter with him. Damn it. Don't make me tell you again. She's not going to do it. I don't know. For some reason... It's not like she can't get there. I don't know. I'm going to send her right to his location. So, yeah. This, this merchant has barley. He's got beet seeds. And he's got more cabbage seeds. He's got flax seeds. Um, and that's about all I need from them, I think. No apple trees, no apple trees. Okay. Uh, what do we sell them, right? Because there's no, there's no money per se. I think you, you can make like gold and silver bars later on, but, uh, uh, so these always decay on me anyway. So I'm going to sell my healing kits, uh, a few of them, and I'm going to sell some of that roasted meat because she was hauling a deer in right now. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. And how many... Barley seeds was that. Mm. Nine barley. Okay. So I need to put it's six, seven, eight, nine, eleven. And that'll be a season for the barley there, I think. Um, I may actually fence that field. We'll see. First thing I did here, that's... So you can raise and lower... Oops, that's make the roofs disappear, and you can raise and lower the visible terrain layer. All the way up to 16. So merchants show up to your town. You build uh, merchant stalls uh, to give them a predictable place to go if you want to. Uh, I haven't done that yet. I don't want to waste the woods. Um, I also haven't built any religious or entertainment structures. I guess that's going to be my next. Uh, everyone in my, my community are restitutionists. And we'll build them a backgammon table. Does not matter where. Speed time up again. Chop some more trees. A 
Okay. Now Frank's going to go from cutting plants to construction. Got a lot more barley now. Okay, kitchen house is almost done. Going to build a blacksmith here. Okay, so now our priority in research is food preservation. I said that before. She's been cooking this whole time. We needed a research urgently. No, no, no. no, no. What I told you to do, don't run all the way. I need the deer though, but I also need her to research. Oh, she's okay. She's almost through her first day's research. I don't actually know how we're doing. We've got, yeah, she, has, she hasn't learned anything yet. Okay. Our gate is done. I'm going to add a second set of doors. Okay, not backwards. No, why are you... That's a bug. Well... Yeah, see, so you can't rotate the door. Whatever, it's gonna be two doors there for now. And so later it sorts itself out when you build brick, but for right now, aesthetically, the door is gonna be backwards. Okay. Now I can close the Sally port. Okay, he's he's farming. Day five is pretty late to get crops in the grounds, to be honest. I should have had it from day one. But So that yeah, merchant was a faithful sons of England merchant. As you buy things from them, you wind up getting faction reputation and all that stuff. Yeah, it's going to be a good-looking gatehouse. And so now I can start thinking about where the front door of the uh, keep is going to be. Keep in the castle, uh, for those of you who are not aware, don't don't like, spend your time watching Shadowversity or whatever, uh, are uh, the, 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 the keep is a uh, large house. It's a central fortified uh, building. Um, which is used as a combination residence and holdfast, like fallback point when the outer defenses are overrun, um, or as an archery tower to suppress uh, both inside and outside the uh, wards and curtains. But this this keep is going to be fairly impressive. It's going to be a large rectangular or even possibly perfectly square building. Um, probably divided into two halves with a central run or corridor uh, or hall and uh, dwellings on both sides because this this community is going to get pretty big. You know, we got three people right now. We're going to get one in a day or so. Okay, we're 
wood. We always need more wood. It's just working away there. How close are we to? It's gonna be. It's gonna be a day. Oh, and pen's complete. So it's like, wait, am I gonna wind up on those hooks? I'm gonna wind up on those hooks, aren't I? There's, there's hay in the pen for them. Yeah. I don't have too much hay. I'm going to need to cut that hay down there. And oh, there's a lot over there. So. Good. And that, so this, this cuts off the last non-frontal entrance now that that ramp is gone. Did he just jump down off the wall. I'm going to have to watch that again. There's no possible way he... Yeah, now he's got to run all the way around. To it. it must have been the terrain block he was standing on. So I've discovered, I've discovered that clay is actually really useful. I thought clay was kind of, you know, just for, just for filling gaps. First off, it cuts down the amount of wood you use building a building. That's important, right? When you're pressed for trees, but you've got dirt and clay to dig, um, use clay, use wood building materials you have. Um, but also, I'm just gonna aesthetically change the, the logs here. Make clay, how's that look? Oh, that looks cool. Yeah, I'm gonna make them clay. So, also clay can be used for fortifications. Now, it's um, it's really it's really uh, not damage absorbent at all. Um, it it's got very low health. Uh, the enemy can just like get through it like paper. But if you put wood in front of clay, the clay becomes kind of like a backstop. And later on, when you're getting uh, trebuchets shooting at your fortifications. Um, Having an extra layer there to absorb the hit, even if that layer stops existing after it's hit, that's still that's still armor. Um, it still uh, increases the thickness of the uh, the overall wall and prevents things behind that clay layer from getting damaged. So up here, I'm probably going to put uh, I'm going to start lining the interior of the wall with clay um, again because it's cheap and I've got 388 clay compared to. No wood. I have no wood because I'm using the wood as quickly as I get it. Which, you know, again, makes sense. But then we're going to build another set of stairs temporarily up to the top of that wall. And again, for this pit here, it doesn't make sense to leave an open pit. But it does make sense to fill it with clay. And again, it would be just hideously wasteful to fill that with wood. So... And then that, that will give me a step up here. Okay, here it is. So Elmer. Uh, Elmer is being chased by the looters. That's good. The looters are a bandit faction. Um, I'm happy to take them on. Sometimes the person's running from a non-bandit faction. They want to send one archer and three marauders to hunt down Elmer, who is a swindling marshal. He's a moderate restitutionist, 50 years old, um, but he's a proficient animal handler, and it looks like he'll learn marksmanship fast. That's what I want. That's what I want. I want someone to handle my animals and shoot a bow. Um, so we're going to help him. Hello, Elmer. Welcome to the team. His, and his marksman skill is 50. And that was such a good, such a good. So this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have like a master archer. I'm just going to. And the enemy is going to get here in one day, 16 hours. We're already ready for them. Like I have done a good job here. Um, our gate where the fight's going to happen is fortified. Um, my two archers to their one archer, uh, it's going to be, uh, no contest and Elmer is just gonna just join us and, uh, you know, be his, be his best self. Okay. But I am going to start to expand. The wall walk and the front gate so that I have a couple more angles when there's someone plowing into the door there 
they break through the first door, which they will. These these are not reinforced doors, um, so the enemy gets through them in a couple seconds. Um, long enough, though, the gate will hold for me to uh, kill their archer, and then we can just shoot the rest. Like, Frank can hold the stairs or whatever if they get all the way through, or we can fall back and stand up here. And they're like, oh, they're not going to overrun us. Three or four enemies are not going to, what is it, four, four enemies are not going to overrun us. So see, this section's getting filled in here. Again, use clay to landscape. Use clay to correct the, the grade, um, and especially in areas where it's not going to get hit by trebuchet fire, but also like as a, as a backing or a filler for a wall, clay makes a lot of sense. You don't care if it gets destroyed. It's super easy to replace, but it, it, can, it can take a single hit. I think. I don't think there's full structural penetration mechanics like that health the excess damage dealt to the front surface is transferred through to the back surface. Like, I don't think that's how that works. Um, there is some carry through for sure, because if had wood floors in the back of stone be destroyed, but... Just in case things get hairy, also put... windows on either side of the four. Huh, I see the problem here. There's hard to make it symmetrical when it's not symmetrical. I'm going to use the wood on that. And that should only be three, shouldn't it? But you see, you see now the profile of the gatehouse um, has emerged and all we've got to do is reinforce the outside of that with stone. And again, it's going to take a little extra stone, but it'll look real good when I'm done. That's, uh... And... Oh, that's a window, that's why. Okay, cool. Cool, cool. Battle supports. Now I really need to save my food. That's the next. So I can... I almost have food preserving. So the very next thing I'm going to need to do is dig out this cellar under the kitchen. And I'm probably going to put a deep cold storage uh, underneath this big rock here because that's the deepest I'll be able to dig to right now. Enemies here in 23 hours. We're making excellent time. I need more trees, though, don't I? Everyone cut plants for a hot minute. And then construction should be there. And don't forget, when you get a new community member, uh, as Elmer has joined us, you need to uh, also uh, set up their... So Elmer's going to use ranged weapons for sure. He can wear any helmet and all helmets. See, my food's rotting. That's no good. Wear all the armor and... I went to the beach the other day and I built a sand castle. It was a really, really, really fun time, but uh, it was a it was it was an accurate sand castle. It was a you know like an architecturally correct sand castle with a keep and inner and outer wards and towers. And it was, it was a good time. It was a good time.
Okay, food preservation is unlockable now. That's uh, that's a big deal. Actionists like that. Wait through the night. Probably should have made them work all night, but then they might be falling asleep in the fight, right? Like you can, you if if you know that a raid is coming, you can make your peasants like labor extra. But yeah, this is really really coming together. You're starting to see the the floor plan emerge, and I'm likely going to put another gate somewhere here to this outer ward, but it's going to I don't know. It's going to bridge. It's going to bridge somehow. So that there's a point I can control, maybe from up here, the highest. See, she's happy. What's what's making her happy? She drank good ale. But she doesn't need a drink. Uh, she's entertained. They feel good that they helped someone. They just all started, so they're doesn't like her bed and they are sleeping outside so uh, yeah making making rooms for them because they, they will quit your community like people will get unhappy but i don't want to live here this place sucks so housing is probably going to be up here in the next in the next phase after the, the fight and food preservation i really need to dig that cellar as soon as they're done working on the rudimentary gatehouse five hours for that guys show up I'll put some torches around too just for for actual lighting so I'm I'm running I'm running real low on food now Enemies here in three hours. We might not get it all done, but it's good enough. Actually, just gonna pause or slow time down and fix the the crenellations here. That the maculations technically. Um, so cren crenellation is the uh, inter the, the the gap toothed look at the top of the castle wall, but um, maculations are uh, gaps that allow you to shoot down from the top of a wall. Um, you don't have to. You can put the crenellation right along the edge of the wall, um, but you don't have quite the same angle uh, to hit people who are directly below, uh, maybe undermining support or beating on the front door, which which we're about to see in two hours, nine minutes in-game. Uh, okay, we're out of wood anyway. Okay. We're going to send everyone to dig the root cellar now. I'm gonna I'm gonna make a much more substantial root cellar. This is fine. I turn off the see you can see the actual without the uh the pr predicted or planned buildings. Okay, the looters have shown up. Um, so I could give Elmer back, but that would make everyone unhappy. Uh, we're going to be defiant. We're going to refuse to bow to the assailant's demands. Got so my, my actual target, I need to kill the archer to take his bow, and I need to kill this marauder uh, to take uh, her uh, helmet and uh, shield. And they're pretty far away. Where are all my peasants? Everybody's in there digging. It's great. I'm just gonna save.
Okay, we are digging. The enemy is coming. Digging is slow. It takes takes a while to excavate a, a basement or suit terrain. There's the enemy. Okay. Uh, Marauders leading the charge, the archers in the back there. So you levy your peasants. And you're gonna you're gonna hold the gate. Actually, you know what? You're not even gonna hold the gate. You're gonna hold the stairs. Elmer should have a weapon. That's not good. Uh, where's spear? Doesn't matter what weapon I give him, but something's better than nothing. And sword and ice are prioritize the marauder. Archers around. Archer already hit us. This is this is gonna be a an easy easy slaughter. You can see if there's multiple archers, like five archers shooting at you, and they all have a chance to hit you. Your characters can die very quickly, especially if they don't have good armor early on. And so the hardest difficulty mode, you just you wind up dying to mobs of like fifteen archers. I guess is, you know, kind of realistic. They, they broke through the first door. Uh... All right, I'm going to set Francis in. And we got them. And that last that last fella is gonna fall back. And we're gonna kill him. Okay. So that was a raid. That was a, a very simple, rudimentary early raid. Do the repairs. Uh, okay. Then the next thing you want to do is you want to make sure that everything that got dropped can be picked up. Corpses left lying around are really bad for morale for reasons that are probably obvious. So you gotta have, um, like if you played Rim Worlds, uh, this is quite similar. Um, you gotta have a place to dispose of corpses. In this case, I'm gonna build up higher. And we're gonna earmark more trees for cutting. And warfare stuff can go in the stockpile there. Still probably better shields. Elmer needs a bow. It was a better shield. Okay. Everybody's asleep. I always want to create wall walks so that the walls can be transited, but also crenellated. It's a fun game. It's it's like really. Um, I don't know. Like I like I like medieval building games. Uh, I got a lot of time in Conan Exiles. This this kind of scratches that itch a little bit. Like you get to build. Uh, it's a little cartoony, yeah, but you get to build a stylized uh, medieval castle and defend it against sieges. They do bring siege equipment. Um, it's not like 
terribly sophisticated siege equipment. Um, I think they want to add more. It would be cool if they had like battering rams and bombards and there were drawbridges and like uh, the, or the ability for the enemy to scale with ladders. That would that would fundamentally change um, how the melee gameplay works. Just right now, the melee gameplay is create a choke point, control it, which is uh, fairly early medieval. Like if you look at uh, Irish ring forts, they're large ring walls um, with a single person size entrance through which only one person could enter at a time, um, meaning that you know, one good warrior could hold that entrance for a while and potentially just be replaced by another good warrior as the enemy tries to come through. It doesn't matter how good the enemy warrior is when he comes through because he's always at a disadvantage um, coming through, uh, you know, person size entrance as opposed to like a large gate that can admit uh, dozens or hundreds of people at once. There's food lying on the ground there. That's classic. Okay, so it looks like the basement's been dug out completely which means uh, we are going to site uh, food store here. That's that's a lot of shelving that I just put in. Um, it's going to take them a while. It's 20 wood per shelf. But that's, that's an incredible amount of food storage right there. And if you notice the temperature up here in the corner, see it's 22.3 degrees outside. It's only 4.7 degrees inside. Um, it's more like a refrigerator. If I dug down another layer, it, it would be uh, closer to uh, one degree, but And you can uh, you can get ice blocks that you make in the winter uh, you you actually like produce ice and then you can store the blocks In your cold storage and it makes the cold storage even colder So it decreases again and then in the winter cold storage becomes frozen storage um, allows your food to last for a long time in the winter. Wolf's running around wondering what the fuck we're doing to his habitat. I know, man. I know. I feel bad. So I'm going to need them to build uh, food storage ASAP so I can... Because our cabbages are about to, yeah, be up in one day. So we won't run out of food, but uh, we're going to have to hunt and get cabbage again. To get that cabbage. So I've been at this for about an hour. Uh, I think this is a fairly reasonable introduction to um, going medieval. I'm going to keep this save file and we're going to come back to it and expand the castle, talk about different concepts in um, medieval architecture. I'm a, I'm a really big fan. Um, I watch a lot of a lot of documentary television. Um, I've seen pretty much every episode of Time Team. Uh, they're landscape archaeologists. They go out and they uh, will survey for uh, old buildings, uh, old, old uh, stuff, uh, medieval, Iron Age, Bronze Age, uh, in and around the UK. Um, that, that's a really cool one. Uh, offered through Timeline, I want to see, say, uh, it's a YouTube channel. But yeah, I, I, watch, I watch lots of educational content in general, um, and much, much of it is architectural in focus. I, you know, I really like... Um, I really like thinking about uh, how things were done back when and why and what that what that meant for how people lived and and what they believed and how they thought and uh yeah you know you grow up you grow up in a place like this it's gonna it's gonna shape your world for you in a certain way um and also these are like you know not not totally useless skills if there's a zombie apocalypse um the guy who remembers how to build uh uh you know mont and bailey style uh, fortifications might uh, <laughs> might have something to offer. Might have something to offer when the zombies come shambling. Um, but yeah, no. In, in in all seriousness, this is a great game, and you should totally play it. Um, forget the name of the developer off and uh, Foxy Voxel, I think is the uh, production company. Um, yeah, they they did a good job. I really I really quite enjoy going medieval, and it's just charming. It's just charming and fun. And you wind up with like massive sprawling cities and like 25 peasants to manage and big enemy raids and trebuchets and like huge crises. Um, but it, it does lack for uh, like natural disasters and um, nonlinear raids like fire water would be great i would really really appreciate if there were water water voxels um that would be you know 
There's no river. There's no water. I guess when they add fire, they might add water. You might need to build a well or something. Uh, I don't know how that's going to work. Oh, and last but not least, uh, if you build shelves, make sure you earmark them if it is a food storage for food storage because uh, you don't want your peasants storing uh, grass seed or uh, like linen cloth or whatever in your in your kitchen. You want as much of your, your denoted food storage in your cold cellar uh, or your root cellar there for um, for food. Okay, well, that's about that's about all for me for now. This has been Postmodern Cowboy playing Going Medieval, um, a medieval community management game in the vein of RimWorld. Um, if you like watching me play these games, if you like what I have to say, uh, throw me a follow. Um, subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Keep it peaceful out there.